good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, it's a honor to be here in Hong Kong and to be your guest. And uh, the coming 20 minutes, I will give uh, in the first part a kind of short introduction about what does it mean 15 years of uh, Bay Architect and our office in Antwerp uh, that I started with my two uh, co-founders, uh, Evert and Dirk. And in the second part, um, it's called uh, Second Life. And uh, yeah, you will discover uh, what it is uh, about. Um, yeah, this is our team um, during a biking trip in, in France uh, last year. Uh, and um, yeah, you will see, see later. The smallest project we ever did was this carpet. It's a carpet of uh, seven meter by five meter, and it was due for a uh, performance, a theater performance, uh, um, that uh, yeah, did a tour uh, almost in whole uh, Europe. Uh, and what is important is this is a real uh, carpet uh, done by the Flemish uh, tradition, uh, handmade, uh, very expensive as well. Um, and the audience has to sit in the four sides uh, around, so it was not this kind of classical uh, opposition that the players and the audience is the other side. No, there was really an interaction between the players and the audience uh, of this uh, piece. This is the most cheap project I ever did. It was uh, the shop interior for the shop of Missoni. Missoni are these very, very uh, expensive clothes. Uh, and our intervention was only to, uh, to hang this kind of uh, uh, spring balls uh, on the ceiling, and it cost really no money. Uh, but it gave a kind of a certain atmosphere in the shop that really fits uh, the, 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 the clothing. Uh, this is a very uh, nice clothing of um, Missoni. And uh, yeah, this was uh, yeah, just a kind of, uh, and, and, and as well in this small overview, in this small introduction, we will see that we really want to do as well shops, as uh, exhibitions, as houses, as, as everything. And why? Because all these projects are for us a kind of laboratorium to test small things that we as well can use in these big projects or, uh, or in these uh, urban uh, projects. Uh, another project that we did uh, shop is the shop of Walter van Beerendonk. Walter van Beerendonk is of, um, one of the leading uh, contemporary fashion designers uh, in the world uh, based in Antwerp. Uh, we did this shop in the 98, and uh, his uh, question to us was, uh, I want a shop, but when you enter the shop, I don't want that you see clothes. So what we did was uh, making uh, all kind of totally different objects, put them somehow like in kind of installation in this uh, beautiful space. And uh, when you enter the shop, you would discover uh, very slowly more and more clothes. So it was really a kind of uh, experience with the right music, the right people, the right clothes as well. Uh, unfortunately, the shop has to close uh, like a half year to go uh, because it was not that successful. The smallest house we did uh, is this house. It's a kind of small house of 100 square meter uh, as, uh, somewhere in Flanders. Um, it's a house for a single man uh, in the woods. Uh, and uh, yeah, his living room is on the first floor. Uh, he can open all the windows, so in summer times it's very beautiful to uh, really to live between uh, the trees. Uh. Social housing, um, and this is uh, social housing and as well as uh, um, zero emission uh, housing, so it's passive. It means um, it's the first social housing complex that has this kind of zero emission uh, norm. So it means you don't need heating to warm it up because it is so well uh, insulated. Uh, it's based in Brussels. Uh, we did the design together with a new park, uh, as well with a, a kindergarten uh, in the Sokol. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a quite a successful uh, project. They go always uh, bigger and bigger. Another project in Brussels, uh, where, uh, where as well the former speaking was referring to, uh, is uh, as well in Molenbeek. It's uh, a kind of, we did a park, and we call this project a kind of the gatehouse, because uh, the project, it's uh, like a three apartments, has to become a kind of gate as a kind of entrance to the park, who is in a kind of a second level uh, seen from, uh, from the streets. So we made this kind of a very thin uh, circle on the ground floor, and it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger uh, when you uh, pile it uh, up. So it's a kind of, uh, yeah, like a gate uh, marking this hole uh, in, the, in the street. Uh, young, uh, GCC, it's a project in Antwerp. Uh, what is uh, nice to tell about this project is that we somehow uh, reinverse um, the building construction. So all what you see, the concrete, is really bearing. So it's kind, uh, as, it's kind of the concept of a turtle. So the turtle is as well the skeleton on the outside, and the soft part is on the inside. So all what you see, the concrete, is, uh, is, is, is kind of uh, cast concrete. And we, yeah, the, the interior is a kind of a wooden shell, what is in this uh, concrete uh, skeleton. And as well in the back, there's a kind of public space. 
And this project, um, last year, uh, Karl de Pau was one of the guest speakers. He's as well in this uh, forum. Uh, he is the director of the new uh, mass museum, uh, the, mass, the new museum uh, in, uh, in Antwerp. Uh, the building is not done by us. It's done by uh, Willem Jan Neutelings, uh, the Dutch architect. Uh, but we were responsible for the, all the, um, the scenography of all the exhibitions inside. So it's kind of a, the tower. It's like 60 meter high. It's around 10,000 square meter uh, of uh, scenography. And what is very nice, what was very nice for us to, 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 to work on or to think on is, because it's kind of nine levels, it's 10,000 square meter, um, it's kind of very hard to, yeah, to, 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 to visit all the exhibitions in one time. So what we did was like making different teams and each floor has another team. Um, and then really start designing within the team um, and making, trying to make kind of very strong yeah, experience uh, for all the uh, visitors uh, of the museum. So what you now will see is like each time that you pass another space, it's kind of completely different. And you, therefore, there is a kind of a freshness uh, and that you keep, uh, that you stay aware, uh, discovering all the different spaces of this uh, museum. Um, and it was very uh, yeah, intense, but very nice as well to work together with these curators, with these uh, people uh, responsible for the public, uh, uh, with the people who are responsible about the maintenance and everything. Uh, and it was a kind of a very nice uh, project. And every space where you come, it's kind of totally different experience in this uh, new uh, mass, uh, the new museum uh, in Antwerp. It's uh, uh, really worth uh, to visit, I think. It's an exhibition about the harbor. So it looks like uh, every floor is designed by another architect. But no, it's like uh, uh, our team did uh, the, whole, uh, the whole museum. Then we go to another scale, uh, public buildings. This is the first building actually I, I designed. I was still a, stu a student when we won this competition. It's a renovation of an uh, old uh, building in, uh, in Brussels. And it became a, a theater, uh, but a theater, a cultural center, uh, especially for like a very young artist, uh, starting artist, street art. Uh, so therefore, there's as well this kind of reverence in the interior of this uh, new uh, cultural center. The canopy of Kiel. In 2003, the city of Antwerp organized a competition to make on this space uh, a square. We were invited to this competition. But you have to know, uh, this is a kind of a street of like uh, three kilometer long. Uh, here became a new uh, shopping center, uh, not designed by us. And this is another shopping street. And the city was afraid that by this new shopping center, this uh, old shopping street would die. And therefore, they organized, uh, organized the competition Please, can you design a new square uh, on this uh, spot? Now, we won this competition by saying, no, you can't make a square there, because this is a street. And a square has a certain proportion, has four walls. So you can never make a square on the street. Um, but what we said is, what you will can do is uh, not making a square, but yet what you can do is making a place. So we introduced a kind of canopy as a kind of urban roof, just to make a kind of marcation point on this long street, and that have become a kind of iconical uh, building um, as a kind of point of reference uh, in this uh, long street. And then we start thinking, how are we going to, yeah, to, to design it? And one of the, uh, yeah, we started with just a kind of a very simple grid, a waffle, a one by one meter. Uh, we put kind of pillows under it, and then we start calculating what are the force lines in this uh, roof. And then you get this kind of very complex uh, forms. Uh, then we made a, a model out of it. And then we, uh, we build it. Uh, so it's just a kind of, uh, kind of iconic uh, place. It has no function. The only function is, I am here. Uh, and, um, and it really works uh, very well, because uh, by the uh, yeah, inauguration of this uh, place, uh, uh, let's say, there came kind of uh, a Muslim uh, man, uh, because this is an area where a lot of uh, Moroccan uh, uh, people live. And he said, yeah, uh, you're the architect. He said, yes, yes, I'm the architect. And he said, yeah, what I really like on your proposal is that you use the Moorish tradition in the design of your, uh, your canopy. And I said, OK, I didn't know that. But when you see, of course, you, you, there is a kind of, yeah, you can recognize the structure of some of these, the temples in the Morocco in the design. But for us, it was just a kind of scientific uh, solution uh, of, or, or, or to make a kind of a form. But what is uh, very beautiful is how the light reflects in all these kind of uh, panels uh, of the uh, roof. This is just a kind of a commercial building that we did with showrooms. We go bigger. This is the, biggest, uh, the first shopping center in Belgium that we are now going to renovate. And it will be finished next year. 
and this is the master plan that we did for a new city, uh, uh, an extension of an uh, old city uh, in the uh, Antwerp, uh, in the Turnhout, with the new square and the new square in winter times. But now about a second life. Um, I will show uh, three projects that we did, and I will go more into it. But um, what I want to bring to discussion is, uh, especially in Belgium or in Europe, but I think it's as well the issue in, in Hong Kong and, and as well in, in China, uh, we, have, we have to take care about the open space. Um, cities can't always uh, keep growing, and we have to think what are we going to do with the old buildings in the old cities? Because some of these buildings don't have a function anymore sometimes because they are like, yeah, they are designed for something, uh, but now, yeah, there, there's no need anymore. And um, what I will show now are, are like three kind of extreme answers uh, on this kind of very difficult question uh, sometime. The first one is the kind of uh, an extreme example. Uh, it's in the center of, uh, of Brussels. Uh, Brussels, yeah, the capital of uh, Belgium as well as uh, Europe. It's uh, in this spot. You recognize here the kind of the pentagram, what is the heart of the, of the city. Um, and um, yeah, a client of us, it's a cultural center, so it was a client without uh, any, uh, any money, um, decided to rent a space for two years um, because uh, he wants there a, the a temporary theater. So there was no budget. It's kind of a medieval, not so interesting uh, building. Uh, the section uh, is a kind of a... Oops. The section is kind of a ground floor, and on the first floor, there is this kind of nice uh, industrial uh, shed roof. But we have to make a kind of cultural building out of it, so it, you need a kind of uh, concert hall, you need offices, you need toilets, you need a bar, all these kind of functions, but there was actually no money. The only money that we had was like, uh, if you uh, recalculate it, somehow like a 600 um, Hong Kong dollar, so it's really nothing to make from an empty space a cultural uh, building. So then we start uh, thinking and brainstorming and, and trying to find uh, solutions uh, really from out of, uh, of the box. So what do you need if you make a concert hall? You need fat walls in concrete or masonry because you need this acoustic insulation. Of course, we don't have the money because it's very expensive to build like that. Um, and then we start thinking, okay, what could be a solution? Maybe sandbags. And how you can, uh, yeah, who can, you, uh, who can deliver sandbags? It's the civil, uh, uh, civil, uh, guard, uh, civil guard. Uh, it's like the firemen, they come uh, uh, free to your house when your house is burning, or the ambulance come as well free when you had the car accident. Uh, and the civil um, guard, they come as well for free if there's a kind of a problem uh, with, for, in this case, sound. So we sent a letter to the Minister of Internal Affairs saying, listen, there, there is a possible a huge problem coming in the center of Brussels about sound pollution. Please, can you deliver 4,700 and something uh, sandbags? And then we can make this kind of a new space. So they did it. And so then we stepped all the sandbags uh, vertically, uh, did a kind of recuperation of old doors from other projects. And we made a kind of installation uh, with uh, sandbags. And we had actually our new uh, concert uh, hall. This is the inside. And it, as well with the sandbags, it's, kind of, it's not only very good for insulation. It's as well very good for absorption and the, dis, uh, the, uh, the distribution uh, of uh, the sound. The same problem with the bar. We had as well no money for the bar. So we, uh, we called one of the biggest breweries uh, in, in Belgium. Please, can you deliver these uh, beer crates? And we, can, and we made a counter. We made a whole installation with the recuperation of these uh, beer crates. On the first floor, under these very beautiful roofs, they, we needed to provide uh, offices. Another time, we didn't have any money to make really offices with uh, gypsum uh, board walls or other tools. Uh, what was the most cheap uh, solution that we could find were these uh, kind of uh, glass houses, because you can buy them really for nothing in, uh, in, in the shop. Uh, it costs like uh, 7,000 Hong Kong dollars somehow. Um, but it actually it's kind of a very uh, precise answer for an office because it's individually, uh, you can close it off, you can heat it, uh, they are acoustically uh, not connected with each other. So that was like the solution for this uh, temporary solution, a temporary theater in the heart of uh, Brussels. Secondly, a second project I would show is the Grote Post. The Grote Post is uh, it's kind of, uh, it's on the seaside, it's uh, in Oostend. Oostend is the queen of the villages on the seaside. Um, and um, yeah, this is the building, there's the sea, this is the casino, and in front of is kind of a nice uh, park. Now this building, 
it's a, it's a monument, uh, and actually it was a former post building, so where you uh, where you can uh, stamp um, your letters, you send your letters and everything. Um, but it was classified because it's a project. It's a, it's a, it's done by famous Belgian architect Gaston Esslink. It's from '54, um, and it was classified. So it's a monument, so you can't actually touch it. But the post decided to move out, so the building was for like for 10 or 15 years totally empty, and the city didn't know what we can do with this building. It's quite big; it's uh, 15,000 square meter uh, big, um, and the city had a need for a new cultural center. Okay, what do you need for a cultural center? It's a big auditorium, another a smaller auditorium, uh, ateliers, and, and so on. So they organized the competition. How can you make from this building that you can't touch because it's a monument, uh, and it was actually an office building, how can you make a cultural building out of uh, it? This is, uh, for example, the image of the old uh, entrance hall where you could buy the stamps. So what we did in the competition, and after that, well, we executed this. So this is the whole part of the monument. So what we did, we were like in the heart of the building. We made the, yeah, kind of, we, 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 we digged everything out. Uh, and we put the big uh, auditorium under the ground. Uh, then this is the stage with the kind of technical theater uh, tower uh, yeah, above the stage. And on top of that, we made a kind of the small uh, auditorium for 200 people. So we didn't touch at all the monument. This is a kind of very strong restoration and keeping really everything what was designed in 54, but just bring it in a new condition. Uh, this one is a kind of very rough uh, new building that we, may, uh, that we put in the heart of the uh, building, but really uh, under uh, the ground. Uh, and then a second uh, important uh, question uh, was, how can you bring 400 people to all these uh, levels? Because these old stairs are just not wide enough for uh, the safe evacuation of all these people. And therefore, we introduced these kind of tubes so that bringing all the people between the different parts of the building from one level to uh, the other. So this is the building yeah, after the, uh, the, the restoration. So from the outside, you don't see any difference uh, with uh, before. This is the restoration of the hall. So it's kind of, uh, it looks like it was always like that. And, uh, and now on this, uh, where you, once you bought your, uh, your letters, uh, your stamps for the letters, now you can buy the tickets for the performances. Uh, from the old, uh, we, we introduced the bars in the kind of old uh, uh, yeah, uh, offices, actually. These are the old toilets. But then you enter the, the new spaces, and here the new story starts. It's kind of new layer to an old building. Uh, here, this is kind of one of these uh, tubes under the ground going to the new auditorium, who is really under the ground, and it has a kind of a, a dark uh, uh, space uh, as a kind of interior of a, of, of a muscle uh, with the big uh, room of a big audit uh, auditorium of 400 people. And then on top is a second room of 200 people uh, for uh, uh, the second uh, auditorium. And they are all connected with these tubes, connecting the one part of the building with the other one. So here under is a kind of a big uh, auditoria. Here on top is a small auditoria. And this is the new public um, um, uh, circulation uh, to connect all the different parts of the building with each other. And they got actually for free a kind of external auditoria uh, on the extra. Um, and uh, it's kind of a nice space in the center of this uh, block. So actually the only place that we touch the monument is here and there. And this was allowed for the authorities. And then I come to the last uh, project I want to, to show you. It's as well in Brussels, in the center, and it's called uh, Muntpunt. Like, like uh, uh, Olivier Bastin, the former speaker, already um, um, announced, is that uh, in Brussels, in the in the in the beginning, uh, in the, 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 the first uh, half of uh, the 20th century, there were like huge. Um, Infra, uh, huge uh, infrastructure works in all this part of the city. And there were like, uh, they, so, and, and there are a lot of building, buildings in the center of Brussels that has actually nothing to do with the memory of the city. Uh, they came there because uh, kind of uh, developers uh, just put a building somewhere in the center of the city because they want to maximize their money. But it was not really well uh, thought. So there were like, uh, in Brussels are like uh, yeah, quite a lot of these kind of uh, examples. Um, and uh, our client, it was the Flemish uh, government, 
uh, bought this kind of uh, 70s um, office building in the heart of the city, but it's really the heart of the city because here is the opera, so it's kind of very, now it's kind of very nice square, but there is this kind of uh, strange building uh, as well from the 60s, 70s, uh, just uh, made there on the kind of a, quite a banal uh, way. Now, uh, in the first years, uh, the, the, the Flemish government used this building as, uh, they just put uh, yeah, racks there and it, was, it became a library, but uh, it was only on the ground floor and the first floor, um, and uh, the idea was how to make from a office building a public building. That was, our, uh, that was the idea of the competition uh, that we had uh, to do. So this is just, again, the office building. Here is a kind of 19th century uh, old building. You will see this is a kind of a normal uh, Brussels house. This is the situation that we found in 2009. What is this? Every floor is only 2 meters 60 high, so it's very, very low. It's too low for a public building. Um, this is the entrance, so it's not at scale from this big square there. Uh, the floors are not connected to each other, so there's a kind of lot of problems. First thing. Uh, second uh, technical uh, problem that we had, an office building has a kind of maximum bearing uh, capacity of 200 kilograms a square meter. For a library, you need 500, square, uh, 500 kilograms a square meter. So it means if you just change the function, the building will collapse. So what we did with uh, our engineers is cutting away huge parts of concrete so that the building become lighter and because the building becomes lighter you can add all the books so it can become heavy so it was a kind of balance uh, exercise in cutting away, cutting away concrete and adding again the uh, extra weight of all the books and because we cut away all these, uh, uh, these uh, concrete uh, slabs we got double height spaces and these double height spaces is what you need in a public uh, building. So it was, like, it was, like, it was actually uh, two problems uh, that we solved with one uh, intention. So here you see the new double high spaces. The circulation for the public go from double high space to double high space till the sixth floor. The low spaces, they remained, and this was for the uh, stockage of uh, all the books, all the media. And here is the result. So here you see the entrance now. So the kind of office building was only like a two uh, meter 60 high. Now we have these double heights, and it goes like a spiral around the building in the inside uh, of, the, of, the, of the building. So just to show how you can make from a kind of banal office building a kind of interesting uh, public uh, building. In the center of the, of the building, there is this kind of old concrete core with all the elevators and stairs. It just, uh, we kept it, and we just covered it with a kind of huge uh, book tower uh, from the ground floor till the uh, sixth uh, uh, floor. The lecture hall, the reading hall, excuse, excuse me, uh, different spaces to sit, uh, a kind of small auditoria for 60 people. And this is the building then that we demolished with the connection to make the floors on the 70, uh, the building from the 70s and the 19th century building uh, to make the connection between two. This is the uh, renovation, the restoration of the uh, 19th century building. This is then the connection building with all the concrete stairs that you just sh uh, shown in the previous uh, image. And this is the yeah, new uh, elevation. Actually, it's not new, but this is actually uh, an entrance on scale of the square, on scale as well with the opera house uh, that is the, the neighbor. And actually, with this uh, image, uh, I would like uh, to, to, to finish. Um, it's, um, it's an image of, uh, maybe you know it, it's uh, the, the frog uh, king, the a fairy tale. Um, and the fairy tale goes like a kind of beautiful princess uh, would like to desire something, uh, her golden ball uh, back, but uh, she has to kiss uh, the frog. Um, and she, yeah, she, she hesitates, but after an end she does, and yeah, finally she kisses uh, the frog, and then the very beautiful prince arrives and they get married and uh, they are yeah, happy. Uh, it's kind of a very beautiful uh, fairy tale that you probably know as well. But I think we as uh, architects and as designers, um, especially in, in, in cities like Brussels, Antwerp, but as well as uh, Hong Kong, sometimes we have to dare um, to kiss the frog. And I think the frog are this sometimes very difficult buildings or old buildings or ugly buildings. But I think it's our uh, aim and our goal and our uh, yeah, destination um, that we as uh, yeah, all the creative people have to find solutions to give new functions or to give a kind of new uh, layer or new history uh, to uh, old uh, buildings. And uh, therefore, I would thank you for your attention. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Can I ask, is there a certain design philosophy that you applied with uh, most of the projects that you have presented? Um, yeah, it's a very difficult question. 
So your question is, what is our design philosophy? Um, um, maybe um, what we are always looking for, and it's as well in our mission, it's um, what we do is um, we try to find an answer on the question why. Uh, so not on the question what or how, but why. So what is actually the real uh, yeah, aim or uh, problem that our client or that in the, in the city uh, or that a building has? And then try to find uh, the solution um, yeah, that fits on the question why. Um, so it's not about what, because if you answer the question on what, it's more about, uh, or how, it's more about styles, or it's more about how things look. But that's how things appear or looking, I'm really not interested in. That you maybe as well see on our portfolio, is every building looks completely different. Because every building is an answer on the same question, why, but not on what or how. Um, and therefore, yeah, that's as well the reason that we try or what we, what we really love to do is really to work one day on this kind of small stage design and the other one day on a kind of huge uh, um, urban project because it's actually this always the same question, this why question, but not, yeah, and, and, but you can do this on a very small scale or on a very big scale. This is, I think, for us the kind of the, yeah, the main uh, yeah, question that we ask always ourselves why. I hope it's an answer on your Thanks again, Sven. <laughs>